Well, the first question that we need to ask about fine tuning is fine tuning for what? For which cosmic outcome is the universe fine tuned to, to make? Uh, galaxies, stars, planets, life, intelligent life, you, Robert Lawrence Kuhn. If you would ask the question, what is the probability that from the Big Bang I would get this deck of cards? Uh, then you see that the question is, is misleading, is, is, uh, is meaningless. Kamala, let's talk about fine tuning, which uh, we talk a lot about on Closer to Truth, exclusively from a, a physics point of view in physics and in cosmology, and some philosophy and some theology um, views on it as well. But uh, what is your approach to fine tuning? I think you have a, a different approach than what we've uh, traditionally used. Yes, well, uh, first of all, it's uh, an extremely difficult uh, question and argument. Um, there, are, there, are many, there are many fallacies that people make when they speak about fine-tuning. And, well, the first question that we need to ask about fine-tuning is fine-tuning for what? For which cosmic outcome is the uh, universe fine-tuned to to make uh, galaxies, stars, planets, life, intelligent life, you, Robert Lawrence Kuhn. If you would ask the question, what is the probability that from the Big Bang I would get this deck of cards? Uh, then you see that the question is, is misleading, is, is, uh, is meaningless because uh, it's so improbable that it doesn't make sense. Um, so, so that's that's one first uh, thing that we need to clarify when we speak about fine tuning. Are we speaking fine tuning for what? We need to clarify which cosmic outcome uh, we, we are speaking about. Well, ge generally, the, the thinking is, I guess, to be very simple on two levels. One is the fine tuning requirement for uh, um, solid objects that have a long lifetimes, um, and that would be stars, galaxies, planets, things like that. So that's sort of category one, um, a fine, the fine tuning of the laws of physics to enable that rather than, you know, a, a massive um, uh, expansion, not giving solid objects a chance to congeal by, by gravity over time or doing it so quickly that everything becomes a black hole. So that's one, long-term stable objects. The second kind of thing has to do with life and what are the additional requirements for um, uh, heavier atoms and the kinds of complex molecules that we need uh, for, for life. Uh, the question, the next question in terms of mind um, is, a, a, a more complicated in terms of what is the nature of consciousness. So that's why I like to keep it to the two, forming objects in physics and then having biological uh, existence. Once you have that and you build evolution, evolution can in, in most scenarios lead to whatever you have so that the end result uh, are different kinds of species and potentially consciousness under under physicalist models. I mean, I think that's a, a way to look at, at the at the field. And, and those are controversial. Some would say that the fine tuning necessary for both of those steps is very fine. Others would say no, that it's not that fine that you, if you vary multiple variables at the same time, then you can get a, a, a larger set, set of uh, possible worlds. Uh, and then it's a fallacy to just do one at a time because you get an artificial fine tuning yes absolutely that's a, that's a very common fallacy to need to fact to to vary just one factor at a time and whereas you you could kind of fix the problem by varying two factors or, or more uh, and yes another issue is also uh, the the fact that the the parameter space of possible universes so we have about 31 physical and cosmological constants um, that could have been different that are 
just measured. I, I mean, first, in a way, the the the, the goal of physics, uh, of physical theory and cosmological theory, is is, is to to reduce this space, so to what I would say to capture the free parameters, to integrate them into broader theories, so we don't need to 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 wonder about them. They 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 become explained by by physical and cosmological theories. But then ultimately, the the fine tuning question asks: uh, Are complex universes rare or common in the space of possible universes? And so, if we want to tackle this question seriously, we need to to have a definition of the space of possible universes. So, what how how different the universe could have been, and then and then assess um, in this space of possible universes the ones uh, that that lead to to life or complexity or to matter that is um, solid matter versus the ones that, that fail to do that. And, and then you would get really a sense of, uh, of how probable or improbable our, our universe is. Yeah, to address this question, I, I proposed uh, speculatively to, 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 to create a new uh, field of inquiry, which I called uh, artificial cosmogenesis. So it's the idea to, to simulate other possible universes to be able to study the, the fine-tuning question. So uh, artificial cosmogenesis is something that, that you've uh, focused on and uh, kind of created. Um, how specifically does that work? Because if you have a multiverse of uh, uh, possible universes of every possibility, then you know, you're dealing with the, um, the absurdities of, of uh, of infinities because uh, if you have an infinity then anything that's possible will will not only have to happen it'll have to happen an infinite number of times uh, which is a uh, a characteristic of the concept of infinity which is in a sense non-mathematical it's it, it is a conceptual idea um, and so how does your artificial cosmogenesis kind of break through that? It doesn't really. I mean, obviously, you would have to make choices about what universes you want to, to simulate. And uh, because even uh, the, the even the idea that the hardware that you would need to simulate uh, 10 to the 500 possible universes, you would need more computational hardware than the than the whole of the universe could give you so so it's impossible but i should have precised that uh, the endeavor uh, comes with analogy with the field of artificial life where researchers try to build uh, artificially living systems typically in, in computers uh, so they 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 start with the most fundamental principles of of life and, and see if they can get some evolution going on some predator prey dynamics parasites etc 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 and typically it's it's very hard to to come up with what they call in the field the open ended evolution so that the system continues to to evolve and to complexify and so yeah what i propose is basically uh, uh, use the same approach to simulate not just life, but possible universes. So uh, you talk about um, two uh, kind of different ways of applying evolutionary explanations of fine tuning and evolutionary ex explanations is part of your core um, ontological foundations. Uh, and so using an evolutionary explanation for fine tuning you have two categories, a cosmological natural selection, as you call it, and a what you say is a broader scenario of cosmological artificial selection. So define each of those terms and then uh, how, how do they articulate? So the idea of cosmological natural selection was proposed by Lee Smolin as a way to address the, the fine tuning problem. and. He made the, the, the following analogy. He says that uh, cosmology today is in the same state as biological uh, theory was before any evolutionary theory, where you had this uh, 
fixed species uh, everywhere on Earth that seem to be extremely well, well adapted to the environment and they are very different. And so the mainstream explanation that it was God who created the, the different fixed species and, and that would be the explanation. And he says uh, provocatively that uh, cosmology is, uh, is in a similar situation. We have um, these fixed constants that, that lead to, to, the, to a universe that can give rise to complexity. Um, but uh, they, they are largely unexplained, these constants that are somehow fine-tuned. And, and so what he says is that we need to, to take the same solution that we took for biology to have uh, an evolutionary history um, that explains how, how species um, were able to evolve and differentiate. And, and, and so this, uh, this is a causal explanation of why they are adapted to the environment. And he proposes to use evolutionary theory uh, to explain the fine-tuning problem and saying that actually there was a population of universes that reproduce through black holes and only the ones that are uh, optimized or that are fit to produce black holes themselves will be selected after many generations. And that would be his explanation of, uh, of the fine-tuning I, I'm, I'm, I, I think he had that at all. I'm not sure he continued to subscribe to that, but um, it's certainly a uh, innovative, popular idea. Now you've taken it to the next step of there in terms of artificial. Yes. Then if you look more closely at cosmological natural selection, the, uh, there is the issue that there is not an environment where selection can operate because a universe, by definition, is a space-time region that doesn't interact with something else. Um, the hereditary mechanism is not uh, specified either. Like, why, why would the new universe that spawns from a black hole be similar to the, to the universe it is embedded with? There is no explanation with that. And if you don't have hered heredity, you don't really have evolution either. And so what I propose is to fix these two main issues and, and, and to say that uh, intelligent life could perform this hereditary function um, in the sense that, that that would be actually the, the ultimate goal of, of science is to, to build a, a blueprint of, of the universe of the, and of other possible universes and be able to, to use this blueprint to make a new universe. I don't know if you follow still. Yeah, 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 you know, the simulation uh, argument. Uh, and so you're using a, a, a simulation argument to uh, explain fine tuning and it, you integrate the two, which is kind of an original concept, uh, right? So you're taking the simulation possibility as an explanation for fine tuning. Uh, not exactly. I mean, sim sim simulation is part of it in the sense that uh, you would want to um, to do some artificial cosmogenesis, so to to be able to generate universes, to to learn how to to generate universes that can that can produce open-ended evolution in your simulations, uh, and then you pick up the simulation that works really well, and you you actually implement just this one. And this simulation is highly fine-tuned and is highly conductive to, to, to right. complexity. And, and the reason why it's, uh, it's fine-tuned, which would be our universe, is that at a higher level that some other kinds of species has um, artificially done that because they wanted to create a, a universe that needed to be fine-tuned and they figured out how to do that. Yes, that's that's uh, the implication. You can, uh, if you want the whole picture, that's that's true. Then, of course, it uh, it might feel very uncomfortable because it's kind of reintroducing uh, the the design uh, uh, kind of design argument. Uh, but the big difference here is that it's a it's a natural what Paul Davis called a natural god idea. So it's not a supernatural design, but it's a natural design. It's 
it's um yeah we, we we don't mind to be uncomfortable on closer to truth that uh, that's fine we, we we'll, when we get comfortable then we're uncomfortable so uh, ha happy to make me uncomfortable please do uh, however the, you know the uh, the main argument i have uh, with that is that you know even if it were true if i give you everything you said it i, I don't make any progress because then i have it just kicks the problem up a level and then say, okay, this other dimension or species created the, our fine tuning. What created their fine tuning? You know, is the tur turtles all the way up, as we say, or down? Uh, it doesn't deal with the problem at all. It just uh, it cre creates a new level of complexity. That's it. Yes, yes, and no. Uh, I think it's um, it's more complicated. And well, in my book, I have a chapter. Uh, I have a chapter about this issue that I call the origin of the origins. And so I ask the question: But if we think about it in our mind, what would be a satisfying answer to the origin of the universe? And even the word uh, "ultimate" explanation, uh, "ultimate" comes from Latin "ultimare," which means coming to an end. So implicitly, in our you know, cognitive mind um, seeking to answer these big questions, we want to come to an end, to, to have an initial explanation. And that's why the God hypothesis is so attractive, because it's so clear and, and understandable. But I think it's uh, ultimately just uh, an artifact of our mind, and there is actually no logical contradiction of having an infinite uh, cycle of, of universes uh, with no beginning and no end. So it, are, are those the two um, uh, boundary conditions or even even two absolute conditions? Either you have not just the universe, but but a whole cosmos or the, a, a total reality, all there is. Either it has an infinite regress of causations of some kind or it has a stopping point. I mean, can we say at least that those are the, the two possibilities and there are no others? Can we at least be confident to say that? Um, well, I haven't developed this, but I would add a, a third from, from um, dynamical systems theory. So you have the, the, the point attractor, which is the simplest, simplest one. Then you have the cycle attractor, which is the, this recurrence ID. But in principle, you could have strange attractors, which are strange, as the <laughs> uh, name says, um, which could be weirder than we can conceptualize. So I'm... I'm also with you here that uh, these are the two main explanations, but I, I'm, I'm not excluding uh, other, even weirder explanations uh, for this, from this uh, theoretical, dynamical perspective. Well, that dynamical one would, in my, would be a subset of the infinite variety, but just worked in a different way. Maybe, maybe, yes. Um, and so this, this total way of thinking i think the, the the point that you make which i like is that this kind of thinking and we're speculating about a lot of things arguing back and forth but these are the kinds of things that enrich our understanding of what fine tuning is and a lot of the fine tuning discussions are too simplistic in their understanding whether purely scientific physical cosmological theological or whatever that there are richer ways to understand the question yes i agree Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and comment below. You can support Closer to Truth by subscribing. Closer to Truth is now accepting your tax-exempt donations. Please come to closertotruth.com forward slash donate. Thank you very much for supporting us and thanks for watching.